It's the nation's favourite antiques expert. Yeah! Super cool. How about that? Behind the wheel of a classic car. <laughs> and a goal to scar Britain for antiques. <laughs> The aim? To make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. There'll be worthy winners... Yes! ..and valiant losers. Blast it! Will it be the high road to glory... <laughs> ..or the slow road to disaster? <laughs> this is the Antiques Road Trip. Giddy up. Previously on Antiques Road Trip... How excited are you? I'm really excited. Dealer Stephanie Connell and auctioneer Charlie Ross. <laughs> Excitable experts in the Hillman Superminx. Oh, oh gosh, we're going backwards, we're Matron. Backwards. Hold on. <laughs> oh dear. Look left. Oh, we're all right. All clear. We began in the Garden of England. Uh, can you make the windscreen wipers go, please? That's my girl. <laughs> Took in London, Oxford, and Wales. Handbrake on. Pray. And we're approaching a cliff hanger of a final in the fabulous East Midlands. Welcome to Leicester, one of Britain's oldest cities. Now, what can you tell me about Leicester? Come on, football is here. It's very, very sporting, sport. isn't it? The National Space Centre. It's probably the most famous city in Britain. Richard III. Richard III. They found him buried here, didn't they? Yeah, they did. It suffers from a bad rap, apparently. <laughs> Oh, oh, blimey. A bit like Steph's driving. Could you just slow down? Oh, just the testing the suspension. Oh, it's your suspension. What about mine? <laughs> New selection Steph. They're stylish and they're fun. Is a specialist in entertainment memorabilia. No Star Wars, no Batman. Who once caressed the keys of John Lennon's typewriter. Meanwhile, Charlie... I don't know what he's been caressing. This is the BBC. Sniffs out much more traditional antiques. Victorian will do, but Georgian would be better. Although he stole a page out of Steph's book, ironically enough. It was Michael Winners. No. And hasn't looked back since. Standing at Wintan. All at Wintan. Oh, my God. Hey, nice. Well done, Charlie. Whereas it took his young rival an auction or two. Bravo! To really get the knack. Ripple. Steph set out with £200 and has thus far managed to turn that into £293.24. While Charlie, who began, of course, with the same sum, has an even more impressive £497.96p. Steph, behave yourself. Just because it's nearly all over. Nearly. <laughs> they kicked off in Kent and thoroughly explored that county before venturing both north and west. They then journeyed through the middle of England towards the Cotswolds and South Wales. Finally, they've made for the Midlands, loving Leicestershire and approaching Journey's End at Market Harbour. Later, they'll be headed to that aforementioned auction in the southeast of the county. But the first stop is Shenton. Very close to where Richard III came a cropper. No bonnie Prince Charlie, though. He's back in Leicester. I haven't really got any tactics this time. I think I'm just going to buy things I like. It's the last leg, so I'll spend all my money, and then hopefully I'll win. Thanks, Steph. What could possibly go wrong, love? Now, they describe this place as being within a spear's throw of the Battle of Bosworth Field. Note to self, don't mention loin girding. Hello there. You look a man hard at work. I'm always busy. That's good to hear. I'm Steph. I'm Neil. Pleased nice. to meet you. So, with almost £300 to spend for the very first time, what might she plump for? Not that. Oh, I see. It's potentially quite interesting. I like easels. They're usable. They're good for displaying paintings on if you want something a bit funkier than a wall. This one's got good patina. It's obviously been used a lot. A um, lot of paint marks. A little bit of wear and tear. Then if you... Turn it this way, see if it stands up on its own, and it seems pretty good. And it's got a maker's label just there of Windsor and Newton. Founded by a chemist and a painter in 1832. The interesting thing to find out about it will be whose it was. If it was anybody famous, that would be amazing. It's all about the money. It's £65, so I'm going to carry on looking around. I might come back to it. Now, outels, as they say hereabouts. 
this is an interesting thing, but I don't really know what it is. On first inspection, it looks like some kind of railway lamp, but I don't think it is a railway lamp. It's painted red, it's got red glass, so it looks like some kind of warning light. It says PWD on here. Means Public Works Department. It's got a letter H. I don't know what that relates to either, but I'm going to take it to Neil and see if he's got more information about it. Including, we hope, a prize. Hello again, Neil. Hi, Steph. Now, I found a mystery. Ooh. It looks like a railway lamp, but I know it isn't. No, I think I know what this is. It's a roadwork lamp. OK, so that it makes sense. It the early 70s. It warned the public that there was a, a hazard. I bet they never thought it would end up in an antique shop either. Let's call the dealer. Yeah, hi, Graeme. It's Neil from Whitemoors. I'm just wondering what your very best price would be on the road lamp. Right. And that's the absolute best. OK, bye. Good news, £20. I'll tweak it at 20 That's great. Deal done. That's not made much of a dent, has it? Go on. Give yourself a treat. Now, these I like. They are a pair of bowls. And they are designed by an artist called Eric Revilius, the famous printmaker and illustrator, working in the 1920s, 30s and 40s. And did you know his parents ran an antique shop in Eastbourne? But this design is a design called Travel, which he did for Wedgwood. They have the Wedgwood label on the back. So you've got two bowls. I know Revilius is collectible. I recently purchased a coronation mug designed by Revilius for over £100. This one is £70. And this one's £80. I don't really know why. They seem to be in identical condition. So I'm going to take them over to Neil and see what can be done on the price. He'll never get his work done at this rate. Hello again, Neil. I'm bothering you again. That's all right, Steph. No problem at all. So I found this pair of plates. I okay. really like them. They're priced at two completely different prices and not as a pair, which seems quite strange. Right. I think that's a mistake, actually. I think they should both be priced at 80. Whoops! Do you think the owner would take a deal on them? The very best we could do on that is 110. The other thing that I've seen is an easel. Right, yes, I know it. So the easel's priced at 65. What would be the best price on it? I think I'll be able to do 45 on that for you. 45. With that in mind, then, would you take 150 for the two plates and the easel? Yes, I think we could do that for you. Great, that's perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Nicely done. So, plate, easel and lamp for a total of... 170. Thank you very much. There you go. And... While Steph motors towards her next retail outlet, we'll catch up with Charlie back in the city of Leicester, where, very close to the Fox's ground, is the old gas works. Is it Russell? Yes, welcome, Charlie. Nice to see you. Welcome to the National Gas Museum. Thank you. Professor Russell Thomas is an authority on gas, the fuel that once supplied the nation's energy needs. Now, that is amazing. Driving a great variety of appliances, Everything from magic lanterns to a combined washing machine and dishwasher. Coal gas, as opposed to the natural gas we use today, enjoyed a dominant share of the market well, well into the 20th century. So this is a, a kitchen of the 1920s. Yeah. It's got the various domestic appliances that you could use in a house. A gas fire, a gas cooker, gas fridge and gas iron. And here, the main one, the gas light. Can you make it work? I can do. Oh, yeah. magic. Instant light, until electric lighting became available, this was the principal form of lighting in your home. When I lived with my parents as a child, we had gas lighting. We had no electricity. The possibility that coal could be used to make gas has been proven as far back as the early 18th century. But it was William Murdoch, the Scottish engineer and inventor, who foresaw its application for use in lighting. Oh, that's the man, isn't it? He is the father of gas lighting and the gas industry itself. So was Murdoch the first person to extract gas from coal? No, he wasn't the first, but he was the first person to develop a commercial process which you could base an industry on. Right. His idea was to heat coal in an oven called a retort, and by yeah. heating that coal, the gas was released. Murdoch, also the inventor of the oscillating steam engine and much more, came up with the idea when he was working for the engineering firm of Bolton and Watt in the early 1790s. He actually experimented with his own inventions, and one of those was coal gas. And he built a small retort in his back garden, 
and from there he piped the gas from the retort into his house and office. Time for the professor to give Charlie a bit of a chemistry lesson. We're going back in history, aren't we? We certainly are, yes. This is very similar to the experiments that Murdoch would have carried out. The coal is held in the tube there, and you put the heat to the retort, and it released the gas, water, and other molecules in there. Can we get it underway? Yes, I'll just put the burner under the test tube. Excellent. And what temperature are we getting up to? Around 600 degrees. 600 degrees? Yes. But the glass is safe at that temperature? It is, yes. It's, uh, it's heat-resistant glass. It's working a treat, isn't it? It is, yeah. I think it is, Charlie. A bit of a road trip first, this. Right, Russell, are we ready to go? Yeah, I think it should be producing gas now. I'll just disconnect it. Yeah. We'll turn the lights off yeah. and then I'll light the end. Splendid. Oh, yes, look! I could do this at home. I wouldn't recommend it, Charlie. Wonderful! An experiment that works. That's fantastic. And then from there, it developed into an industrial process. Yeah, Murdoch would have lit these little lights in his house, light his office in his house. Extraordinary. Doesn't quite give us enough light, though, does it? If you want to turn off that, we'll uh, go and revert to some newfangled electric lighting, okay. shall we? Will do. Crikey, that was exciting. But while Charlie's been experimenting, Steph's been seeing more of less Tershire. Get it? Next up, the village of Breeden on the hill. That's it. Carboniferous limestone with a church on top. And an antique shop, of course. Well, actually numerous individual traders under one roof. With just shy of £125 left to spend in this establishment. Go, girl. Something that you see in practically every single antiques and vintage shop you ever go to these days are silvac onion jars, beetroot jars, or anything that was a bit random that was made for condiments in the early 60s and late 50s. I think they're hilarious. My grandparents had one, they put it on the table every Christmas, despite the fact that it's the kitschest thing you've ever seen in your life. They were often made by the manufacturer Silvac. You get the onion like this who's crying, boo hoo hoo. Then you get the chutney jar and he's got a little face as well. So if you want something that's really, really kitschy, but very, very funny, who doesn't want to put their pickled onions in an onion that's crying? Nobody. Can I think about that, Steph? <laughs> Meanwhile, Charlie's arrived, putting his budding popular science TV career on hold. Uh, yeah. Buongiorno. To offload some of his squillions. Almost 500 smackers, actually, in the market hall. Didn't know I was a professional harmonica player, did you? Got the lips for it. Is this yours, my dear? It is, yeah. What a magnificent piece of kit it is. <laughs> Do you like my top note, darling? Really? There we are. That's an A. So if you knew more about music than me, which wouldn't be difficult, you would be able to choose the chords and then play it accordingly. <laughs> Ooh, very droll. He means keys. It's known as a Kreutzwender harmonica. Kreutz meaning star. What's your name? Silvana. S oh, Silvana. If only I could think of a tune called Silvana, I could play to you, couldn't I? What about, oh, Silvana, don't you cry for me? What would be your very best price on it to an old man like me? I'd do for 150. Would you? I just don't know. I'm going to continue looking around, if I may. You carry on. That would have made things interesting. <laughs> ah, a brass letterbox and a knocker. That's got no price on it. This is marvellous. This is presumably free. <laughs> I'll do for £15. 15 quid. The great thing about this is the Art Nouveau shape. Look, that is pure Art Nouveau. So we can date that to either side of 1900. The only thing about that is the postman has put so many letters into Silvana's post box that it's rubbed the, the two T's and it looks a bit like letters rather than letters. It's a cockney one. <laughs> so it is. Letterbox. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, your work. Silvana's good at this, oh yeah. I don't know why, if you say it once more for me, I'll buy it. Letterbox. Deal. Fifteen pounds. Fifteen. Marvellous. Warm in to his task. Silvana, the more I look at your stand, the more I keep finding things of interest. You've got some really interesting things here. That's a bit of history, isn't it? It certainly is. 
a lot of people might look at this and think this is converted from a shirt, but no, this is actually made for the Red Cross as a money box, aluminium and brass, and it's totally original from the period. And you've got the bottom that unscrews here for you to collect the money after it's been put in. And it's just the most poignant object. It's not well made, it's not high quality, but it speaks volumes. Made just after World War I, we assume. Priced at £65. I don't suppose you'd take 30 quid for that, would you? Or would you? I think it's a wonderful thing. It'd have to be £40 would it? for me, yeah. yeah. And frankly, our chaps from the 1418 war deserve £40. So I'm going to say I'll have it. He likes it here. Put it there, partner. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So, £55 spent. What about Steph? This is nice. I can tell immediately by the colours that it's a pool pottery dish. Pool pottery in Dorset, very famous, this cream base with the purple, the pink, the yellow and the green and blue. They were originally set up, they were called Carter Stabler Adams, but eventually they changed their name to Pool. Actually, before that, they were called Carter's Industrial Tile Manufactory. So this dish, I think, is from the 60s. It's always check on the back for the marks. I've never seen one in this shape, obviously for snacks, very 60s. Unfortunately, though, it's chipped, which means although it is only 18 pounds, chipped ceramics are really difficult to sell. So I think I'll have to leave it. Well, she's already bought three things today. Hey, look up. Savannah's on the way back. This is interesting. Vintage, it looks to be 1930s. Masonic apron. The sash and the original bag that it came in. The back of the sash has a name label on it which matches the bag. So it tells you exactly where he was a member of the Masons and his number and his name. It's really nice. It's very good quality. Price is on the satchel and it is £38. What would be your best, best, best on that? We'll do for. 25. 25. It's a deal. Thank you very much. That's great. I'll take it. <laughs> it's been a busy day, all right. Thank you very much, sir. With only one left to go. Don't drive off without me. There's a good girl. Why not? No, shopping-wise, that is. <laughs> night, night. Oh, a bump. Oh, go on, just go for it. Ah! New day, new county. They're getting very close now. I can't believe it's all over. Well, nearly all over. Are you going to miss me? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday, Charlie bought a Great War money box and some Art Nouveau door furniture. Letters. Leaving him with just over 440 in his bulging wallet. While Steph picked up plates, a road map, some Masonic equipment and an easel, as you do. So if it was anybody famous, that would be amazing. So she has just under 100 still available to spend today. Look that is at amazing. that! Wow! That is extraordinary! The 82 arches of the mighty Welland Viaduct in Rutlandshire. People Rutland. often say it's the smallest county in England. Yeah, well, it always used to be. I yeah. think the smallest county is the City of London. Oh! I'm probably wrong. Fact check that. <laughs> <laughs> As always, she's right! The city is the smallest by size, although Rutland is the least populated county. You've got a mastermind. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Later, they'll be off to auction in Market Harbour, but the first stop today is in the village of Glaston. Nothing like its Somerset sound alike, where Steph gets a barn all to herself. Good luck, darling. Have a lovely shop. Mwah. There's an awful lot of very nice furniture in here. Hardly her sort of thing, though, really. Hello, Peter. Sir, so, hello. Nice, nice to see nice you. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? Hello. Not too bad, thanks. And you? Oh, yes. Just a question of what to buy now. Just under 100 left, remember. I like these. They are a collection of unusual weights. They're called weights or tethers. So they are extremely heavy. I can't even lift this one. 
And this one is a little bit smaller, so I kind of lift it just. I'm not sure what they're for. This one had some kind of carving on it, which may have been a number. They could be 100 years old, they could be 200 years old. They're all solid granite. And I think they're really interesting, but if I can't lift something... I think they're Leicestershire cheese weights, you know. Now, what about Charlie and the Minks? It's a bit lonely being in the car without Steph. Hello, Steph. I can always pretend to talk to her. Time to focus. Two shops to go and still 440-odd pounds in the bank. I really want to knock a big hole in that. Like an eccentric millionaire, eh? Our Charlie is making his way towards the Northamptonshire town of Kettering, where, as movie fan Steph is no doubt aware, Captain Clark Gable spent some time between missions in World War II. Good morning. Hello, Charlie. How are uh, you? Yeah, I'm great, mate. I'm great. You How are? are you? I'm Daz. Daz? Daz, yeah. And I'm Wazza. <laughs> Was it going to be, Charlie? Here are some, I think, Victorian sovereign scales. And this is to test the weight of your sovereigns because the sovereign value is in the amount of gold that it contains. So if it balances at half a sovereign or a whole sovereign, um, it's a simple thing to carry around in your pocket. And uh, if someone's trying to palm you off with a sovereign, you just need to check it. The very first English gold sovereign was authorised by Henry VII in 1489. Not a lot of people know that. It's a very simple object. It's made of brass. Um, I'm concerned about the, the age of this. And actually, the label does say vintage. And I think Daz has got this spot on here. I think this is not a modern reproduction, but it is... Uh, something that might have been made after the general use of sovereigns. So I'm going to stay clear of that one. Nothing doing there just yet. And 16 miles away, what's going down? Now this I like. I like a bit of rustic social history. It is a wool winder um, made in England, I would assume, although it may be Welsh. It's some kind of soft wood, it's got quite a lot of woodworm, so it may be pine, something like that. Handmade nails. Many of my ancestors were nailers, so they may have even made these nails. I wonder if they had a nail bar. So you'd put your wool in there and you'd be able to wind it from your bobbin. Now, it's got no price on it at all. Peter, can I ask you about this wool winder? Yeah, of course. It's uh, probably late 18th, very early 19th. It's a great piece, isn't it? I really like it. Can you tell me what price it is and then what your very, very, very best <laughs> price on it is? I think we would perhaps put it in at 90 quid or thereabouts initially. Would you be willing to take nearer the sort of £60 pounds mark for it? Call it £70. Lovely. Thanks, Thank Peter. Thank you. OK. Thanks, Peter. £60, £70. Pounds. Thanks very much. Take care. Bye. Bye, bye So, one happy customer in Rutland and in North Hants, window shopping, by the looks of it. The Protector Lamp and Lighting Company Limited, Eccles of Manchester. This is a miner's lamp. Known as a safety lamp with the flame enclosed to reduce the explosive risk of gases like methane. It probably was used down the mine. It's priced at £40. And it says original, and I think the age of that is about... About 1900. Hang on, it looks like there's two. Here you are, Charlie. Ah, you got another one. That's another You're one. You're making them at the back. Well, <laughs> that's just come in. That's a lot earlier than that other one. Oh, isn't but that, that one? That one hasn't wonderful. been priced yet. Made in Aberdare. And this is Thomas and Williams Limited. I like the other lamp, right. but it's got a bit of damage in the top of it. It's been yeah. bashed. This is, I think, earlier, and I love this plaque on it. Time to choose, Charlie. Is it ever so cheap? Slightly a little higher than the one in the window. The other one was priced at 40, so you'd have taken 30, wouldn't you? For the one in the window? Yeah. I think I would have done that. Yeah, so yeah I think I would have done that with you, Charlie. So you'd take 30 for this one? I'd take 40 for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do 35. 30? 35. That's my best. Put your hand out. 35 Thanks, quid. Marvellous. 
I like it. Not made much of a dent in his funds either, has it? 35 of the finest, sir. Excellent. Thank you very much Charlie. indeed. Now, while Charlie lights his way back to the motor, Steph's going to take a ride on a much gentler form of transport, at the Grand Union Canal near Foxton, where she's about to descend the largest flight of staircase locks in the English canal system in the company of Penny Arscott. Hello. Hello there. Ooh. I'm Penny, I'm Steph, nice Hello. to meet you. Hello. No, you did, that was a good entrance. Oh, no. <laughs> so we're about to go towards the locks? Yes, we are. And how many locks are there here at Foxton Locks? There's ten. It's such a beautiful boat. Oh, it's gorgeous. The correct name is a narrow boat. Yes. And not a barge. No. What's the difference between a narrow boat and a barge? Well, narrow boat is seven feet wide, whereas a barge is 12 to 14 feet wide. Britain's canal system began with improvements upon already navigable rivers. But during the late 18th century, as industrial development grew and freight was required to move between areas not served by rivers, a network of so-called narrow canals developed. What's the best way to open a lock? Well, you put your back against it, sit yep. on, sit on, and then push, Put you make sure your feet, yeah, that's it. In these? Uh, yeah, that's it, and now push. It's not as hard as I thought it was going to be. Just be careful you don't fall in. <laughs> <laughs> the construction of Foxton Locks, which began in 1810, was part of the scheme to connect London with the Midlands and the North, to create a sort of M1 waterway that would ensure the movement of goods and resources throughout the country. So this is where we are, Leicester, and they came down and met up with the Grand Union Canal, which then takes you down to London. How long would it take to get from here to London? It would take you nearly six days to get to London from here. Away from the rivers, the creators of the canal network faced huge geographical problems, and none more so than at Foxton, where, confronted with a steep hill, engineer Benjamin Bevan designed ten staircase locks and storage reservoirs called side ponds to maintain water levels. They are the longest and steepest staircase locks in the country. It would have cost more to actually build the canal around the contour of the hill, because you would have to buy the land, plus it would take a lot longer to build. These man-made channels were often called navigations, and the men responsible for the back-breaking toil of digging them came to be known as navvies, a new breed of roving worker. A lot of them were farm labourers. It was a better paid job than actually being a farm labourer, but it was very, very hard work. There was a, over 2,000 miles of canals, and they were dug out by hand, basically. They just had spades and a pickaxe, and that was it. So dangerous, hard yep. work, it's long hours? Yeah, very long hours. And they got paid by how much they dug out. They got tuppence halfpenny per cubic yard, and if they worked hard through the week, they actually earned up to 30 shillings. But they also played hard. They got them a bit of a reputation of uh, going out and getting very drunk. <laughs> As industrial development continued and railways began to supersede canals, the navvies too moved on, a vast construction army of around a quarter of a million men. But Foxton Locks, opened in August 1814, remains a testament to both ingenuity and hard work. So this is the last lock, then? Yes, it is the last lock. We have made it down. So that took us 45 minutes. Yep. How long did it take them to build it? It took four years to build the locks. I think four years is very quick. I think she's right. Now, back to life in the fast Ur lane. I've still got over £400 for my last shop. Come on, Roscoe, spend it. Love the name of the shop. Albert's Archives. Because it's not run by Albert, it's run by Val. But more of that anon. The final, final shopping destination of this trip is North Kilworth, where tidy parking is always appreciated. And as for reckless spending, come on, Charlie, you can do this. Hello. Are you Val? I am. I'm Charlie. Pleased to meet you. Are you in charge? <laughs> I am. I was expecting to find an Albert. Albert is here, but he's sat up on the top. He's step. a rocking he's horse. He's a rocking horse. Is he yeah. the boss? Sometimes, yeah. <laughs>
So, aside from a slightly complicated organisational structure, it all looks promising. Even got free sweeties. Ooh. <laughs> that looks familiar. Look, we've had one of them. Ho, ho, ho. What have we got here? Another salamander. I mean, samovar. This is the big brother of the one I bought for the last auction. But it's not as ornate and it's not as good quality, in my opinion. It is, of course, copper and brass. Uh, it's got this glass handles, both of which are chipped, which is a serious problem. Oh, dear, it's got a brass in it. It's £84. That needs to be bought for 40 <sighs> We could always try Val, couldn't we? Val! Or Albert. Come over here, my dear. I'm here. You've got a samovar. I have. A Russian tearn. And I took the top off and saw the price. Where did you dream up the price from? I didn't dream that. Did you not? No. I've... Have you ever sold one before? I've never sold a summer bar. No, you probably won't sell that one. Have you? <laughs> well, I've had it quite I've... a while. And I... you... <laughs> <laughs> the thing that really concerns me about this one is they are badly damaged. So I don't know whether you've got much leeway in it. Did it cost you lots of money or...? Or did, it, mm. or did it come reasonable? It came quite reasonable, actually. Did it? OK, Charlie, make your move. It's, it's a pathetic offer compared with the asking price, but I suspect this is going to be the best offer you've ever had on your samovar, if it's not the, the only... the only <laughs> offer that I've had on my samovar. I would pay £40 for it. I think that's quite reasonable. It's not bad, is it? Does it show you a profit? That's the key. Yes, it will. That, that would be marvellous. So, can I just bank that in case I find something I like even more? You but can, yeah. If I don't find anything I like more, I will definitely give you my word I will have it. OK. OK. Yep. Now, come with me. I've seen something else. Where are we going now? Quite like we're going over here. Not a rocking horse, is it? Oh, I see. It was this foul, which... I think oh, she's an yes. elegant lady, isn't she? Gorgeous. Edwardian lady, and it's a pastel. I wonder whether it was a print, but it's definitely a pastel. Pastel had a bit of a revival with the pre-Raphaelites, and you might say this work reflects their influence. A. Hitchens, I don't know who Hitchens is, and it hasn't got a price on it. Um, this was a clearance of an old lady that lived in the village. Yeah. Her. her daughter bought it in. Does it have a price? I think you would have to throw a price at me. Although it's the original frame, it would be better reframed, I think. Yeah. Don't you? Yeah. I think it would would come out of itself. So what offer would you make on it? I'd pay 50 quid for it and hopefully it would make money. Well, I'd definitely I... have to have a little think on that one. It's not mine. No, uh... I appreciate that. I would pay you £100 for that in the summer bar. Well, Albert's not saying much, so I think this is down to you, Val. I love your lady. But if you will take £100 for the two... If it makes a fortune, I'll take you out and buy a cup of tea. Charlie! <laughs> I'm all promising. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it might be something stronger. What's the verdict? Yes, I'm... Are you sure? Yes. yes, I am. Not spent a lot by a long chalk, has he? A naughty 40 for the samovar. For the samovar. A sexy 60 for that lovely lady. Can't wait to get his hands on her, can he? And safely stowed in the boot, along with that old samovar, of course. Now, you two, get to Market Harborough. Well, I've had a lovely day. Have you? Ah, yes, I have with you. All my days are lovely, sitting in a Hillman Super Minx with you. Yeah, don't forget the shut eye, eh? All good things must come to an end, so why not here? After setting out from Shenton and seeing a lot of Leicestershire, Rutland and Northamptonshire, they've made for Market Harborough and Gildings. Come on, Steph. Let's get cracking. After you, madam. With internet bidding. Charlie threatened a splurge, but parted with just £190 for his five auction lots. Deja vuing, Steph? Charlie is trying to single-handedly bring some of ours back into fashion. He made profit on the one that he bought in the last round, so he's obviously trying again with the same thing. She, however, went for broke, spending 265 also on five lots. Now, these plates, uh, designed by Eric Revillias, could make money. I mean, his paintings make thousands. So I think these could be the key to Steph's revival. They could be worth one to two hundred pounds, but if the auctioneer gets stuck in, I could be slightly worried with these. 
But what does the man with the gavel, Mark Gilding, make of their lot? There are a surprisingly large number of buyers that we have for Masonic regalia with collections such as this, nicely named brass door knocker and combined letterbox. I think these things are just a bit out of fashion. But my favourite lot is the artist easel. I think this really fits the right name, great condition and should do well. Hear that, Steph? It can be done. Oh. Steph, is this the end of the beginning or the beginning of the end? to use a Churchillian expression. Well, Steph's starting with her big guns, all right. The Revillius plates. Bids on my book here open 55, 65 pounds. 65 pounds, I'm bid for the 75, 85, 90 bid now, 90. 90 pounds, I'm bid then for the pair of these at 90. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Oh, no, no, Steph, Steph, Steph. Anywhere, starting at 90 pounds. <laughs> what would Churchill say? Something about it only being the first skirmish, probably. It's it's disappointing quite that the auctioneers didn't get to their bottom estimate. More war now. First one this time, Charlie's Money Box. And bidding opens here with me at £12, £15, £18. Oh, it's going cheap. £20, I'm bidding the room at 20 Yeah. £20, I'm bidding at 22 25 Come on. £25, room bidding at 25 you're out online. 28 Come on. Your turn. 30, thank you, at 30. And 30 pounds, room bidder at 30 pounds, at 30, 30 pounds, 30 bid online. online. Yeah, come on. 32 pounds, this is cheap. 32. Selling for the room bidder at 35. Bid. Oh, bid! On the gavel, 38 pounds at 38. Oh. 40 in the come room at 40. It's still incredibly cheap. Pounds. Oh, hang on, there's a gentleman oh. whacking me from behind. Are you bidding on this lot? Oh, good in thought. In the room at 40. What a very generous gentleman. Oh, there's How much did it make? 40, wash its face. Charlie is winning by a mile now. He can take that. That was all right. Thanks to this gentleman here. Yeah. Steph Diesel. Did it once belong to a great painter? And um, bidding opens here with me at £60. Pounds. Well done, £60. Pounds, I'm bid. 60. £60, pounds, I'm bid. £60 pounds, five do I see? That's a profit. It's selling on the book at £60. Pounds. That's good. <laughs> Quite better than actually suffering for your art. <laughs> Being that one round that was my entire profit, that's pretty Rough good. Calculation. <laughs> Rough calculation. Charlie's second samovar of the trip is next. Nice lot there, some bidding opens here at £22. What? £22, pounds. What? 22 5, 28, 30, oh, 32, 35. 35, I'm out, 38 oh. in the room now, 40. £40, pounds, 42, 45, 48, 50, 5 sure on yeah. 55, 60 pounds in the room at 60. Five. Still both out of the room, thank you, at 65 with the internet. 65 pounds. Well done, God, John. I love it. You're making a load of money on these samovars. I know. I'm becoming the world expert on samovars. Well, I'm not rushing out to buy one. I'm going to write a book, Samovars and Me. Steph's not catching up at this rate. Her wool winder. Pretty low, actually, with this one. 18 pounds only, oh, I bid. 20, 22, 22 pounds, I bid at 22. 25 pounds online at 25. My bids are out now, we're bidding with the internet. Oh, Here's the sale, it's 25 pounds with a sale room. <laughs> I think even Churchill will have struggled to come back from that. That's what we call a CMB. What's a CMB? It's a crash and burn. Oh, no. And this little lamp of Charlie's, is it going to shine, shine, shine? Again, bids on my book here. I'm going to open the bidding at 18, 20, 22, 25 pounds. Oh, you're nearly there. 25 you're pounds, there. lamp at 25. 25, 28 in the room, 30 the with me. 30, 30, 32 in the room, 32. Oh, cool. Five bids are lost now at 32. The bidder's in the room. It's 32 pounds. Over to oh, my dear. right. Don't you want a miner's lamp? <laughs> with the internet bidder, I'm selling at 35 pounds. Oh, no, you made a profit, didn't you? No. Just holding his own. Anywhere. Never mind, sir. It will be the same in a hundred years' time. Steph's lamp is next. Beats fallen into an hole in the ground, I suppose. Is that fifty pounds? Do I see? What? Eighteen yeah. pounds. I'm bid then. Eighteen pounds. I'm bid for the hand lamp. Twenty in the it's room. It's a loss. Who is the gentleman bidding on it behind you? At twenty pounds. I'm bid. Twenty-two. Do I see? Twenty-two seated at twenty-two. Twenty-two. Twenty-two pounds. I'm bid. Still out. Twenty-two in the seats. It's selling at twenty-two pounds. Two pounds. Very nice so gentleman. Very nice gentleman <laughs> sitting behind you bought it. What a kind man. I can't think what he'll do with it. Pure, pure quality, sir. 
The rust was extra. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Equally practical, but a wee bit more decorative, Charlie's knocker and letter box. We're bidding only here £12. Well, that's oh, not bad. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15. £15